Well, you mountain biking. We've been going now, what, a decade? Um, so many parts to an e-mountain bike system that affect your uh, fun on the trail, the performance of an e-mountain bike. It must be a complex puzzle to, uh, to go about. It is. It is, Steve. I mean, you know, you've also got a range of rider capability, which starts from the entry uh, consumer into the EMTB, all the way to really experienced, gravity-focused riders oh. who are doing, you know, immense... Uh, riding on these incredible trails and they're extracting you know 99% of the capability of a bike like this so we have to come up with a solution which caters for as much for the entry level rider uh, as much as the really advanced rider and as an argument to say actually if you're new to EMTB you need as much capability in that bike as possible yeah to give them as much confidence and to give them as much uh, you know, reassurance that, that, that whatever they are going to end up doing, they, they've got a bike under them that will give them confidence. Let's talk e-mountain bike system then. Um, we'll start off with geometry because let's face it, white are quite well known for the geometry. I think, tell me if I'm right, is that the G160 almost a decade ago was kind of a little bit ahead of his time in terms of the, you know, the kind of the reach numbers and the yeah. sort of bottom bracket and the, the wheelbase. And I think, I think the geometry, apart from the chain state, is not too dissimilar to the bikes of today, is it? Well, that's Were the, you ahead of the curve? Well, I think that's the big challenge, is to translate all that learning from you know, 10, 20 years of, of full suspension uh, MTB design and you know, incorporate that into a bike with a motor and a battery and a pretty heavily reinforced chassis to accommodate that. Um, on top of all of the testing and the compliance things that you have to go through in order to make a strong, safe, dependable uh, EMTB. And yeah, I mean, you know, I'm very fortunate as, as people involved in EMTB design, this sort of 10 year period that's happened has been uh, you know, a really interesting period of bicycle design. The ability and the opportunity to take what we've learned in acoustic bikes or in MTB design and apply that into EMTB is it's a fast moving industry to be in. So we're gonna go into quite a lot of detail. Uh, we're gonna talk about suspension design, we're gonna talk about shock tuning, we're gonna talk about componentry motor, but also central gravity. Now, White have been uh, quite pioneering when it comes to central gravity. I wanna ask you one question. Before we get into it, do you think central gravity will, or is, is a key part of that puzzle to make an e-mountain bike, which is, which I believe is a different tool to a mountain bike, do you think it can be, that could be one key factor in making a bike fun and easy to ride? Well, if you don't pay attention to it, then you don't really know what, you, what you're making, because how do you predict uh, how a bike will ride? Again, in these extremes of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of riding, how do you predict how it will respond to that without you know, paying attention to, to where this mass is in the bike. And the center of gravity is so fundamental. It's first principle stuff. You know, everything has a center of gravity and because everything's affected by, you know, the gravitational field of the Earth. So, you know, if you're moving around, it can be said it's as fundamental as, you know, uh, a, a vehicle's movement can be described by the translation of its center of gravity from one place to another place. Mm -hmm. It's really fundamental stuff. And do you think brands don't pay enough attention to it? Well, you can sort of see. You can you just look at a bike oh. and you can you can see that there's not much attention been paid. Right. But you do have to go and measure it. You, you, you yeah. know you can't necessarily assume that what you might think is a good solution um, will translate to being a good solution. But you've got to sort of know the, the 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 specifics of what you're measuring. Yeah. And from that point, then you can start to adjust it and, and test and hypothesize and, and and come up with a solution, um, which is obviously what our journey has been about at White. You know, it's like how can you add performance to an EMTB? How can you enhance its ability to, you know, whether it's descending or climbing? Um, it's you know pitching forward under braking, rolling, you know, all these things happening all simultaneously at the same time. And, you know, if you understand where your center of gravity is and how the bike responds to that movement, um, you can make 
a bike which is better handling. Mm -hmm. And you know, why would you why would you go out of your way not to mm. incorporate that into your bike, into your product? And you made yourself a jig. You did, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's no way around it. You can't. You know, there's some there's some pretty rough and ready ways of measuring a centre of gravity. You know, you hang can, it off the ceiling. Yeah, you can <laughs> put it on two bathroom scales, and you can make some very rough approximations. But they're just not accurate enough. And we did some various um, rough and ready proof of concepts things where you yeah you literally hang a bike on its side from the ceiling and drop a plumb bob weight, and mm -hmm. you can roughly transcribe where the centre of gravity is. But if you want repeatability and a very high level of accuracy, you have to go and build a, a proper jig and you have to go and invest in some very sensitive load cells um, with a high, super high accuracy um, level, margin of error. And, um, and that way you can then start to repeat, repeatedly measure bikes, change small components and a sort of a, come to a conclusion about where the biggest gains are in affecting the position of centre of gravity, not just in terms of the height off the ground, but in terms of front to rear yeah. uh, balance as well. Luckily, the bike's fairly thin. You know, there's not too much of a. Did you? Of a uh, I, I'm trying to uh, poach some information here. Did you find some significant differences between brands? You must have measured yeah, bikes, we, right? Yeah, we have measured quite a few <laughs> bikes. Yeah, and there are. There's a lot. There's definitely people who, you know, they're just not paying attention. Yeah, and there's some other brands who. You know, it's not an overriding uh, obsession of trying to look at where the centre of gravity is and how can you modify that position. It's quite, but, you know, it's quite interesting. You on your prototype bike, what's this, 2015 yeah. here with the Shimano? I'm yeah. guessing, you know, you see brands nowadays, and some of them have got the, the range extenders high up in the frame. You you had your battery quite low down from early on, right? Yeah, and I mean that was just a function of. Going on That's a, before you view center gravity. Yeah, uh, we 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 looked at it. We went on a on a on a Shimano launch actually, and they were obviously just trying to demonstrate their motor and the, and yeah. the battery because it was new. It was the, I think it was the E eight thousand launch, and um, they just modified some some pre existing Bosch bikes because obviously no one had had this. There were no bikes out there with mm. Shimano at the time, so they'd modified some Bosch bikes, and it, it was basically everything you wouldn't want. It was a really <laughs> tall centre of gravity, yeah. long cranks. Yeah. Um, high bottom bracket. You know, high bottom bracket. The geometry of the bike wasn't great anyway. But, of course, it was an EMTB because you know, we had a fantastic ride. But instantly, you know, you just become aware of the, the, the perception of where the weight was. You know, mm -hmm. you just rock the bike from side to side. You could feel yeah, the weight it, intru so you know, being is, intrusive into the Is that the where your centre of gravity sort of journey began? Yeah, because I it, came yeah. straight back and... and <laughs> built something with the battery as low as we could possibly get it yeah. and improve the geometry overall anyway because again that translation of what we were making in MTB design mm -hmm. translate that into it and then yeah. experiment really with the packaging. To make a bike which can actually yeah. be fun on a trail. And it really just proved yeah. completely what we wanted to do you know I and mean, we even started to make our own crank arms by drilling the thing shorter, drilling the, the pedals uh, location and, and moving it and drilling it shorter, so we make shorter cranks. You know, there's all sorts of really, uh, some people might call it a bodge, but you know, it was a piece of thinking. Like, well, we have to test it, so let's just quickly make something up. So we tested the theory, and it was pretty obvious when you're riding it that that, that was a better system, and that was only a 500 watt hour battery. Mm. So you know, things have moved on quite a lot since then. Folks, I think that's. Uh some really interesting food for thought there. Um, again, thanks Ian for Pleasure. giving us that insight.